To arrange protocols in the protocol stack, we have to have a way for them to pass data to each other as they're cooperating. The way that we do that is an idea known as encapsulation. So let's go back and review the protocol stack. We have application data that's, that you know, might be transmitted, being transmitted from one computer to another. And you can see that as the data is passed from the application level down to the to TCP to IP, and finally actually down to the physical link layer where it's transmitted between computers, the packet keeps getting a little bit bigger. And what's happening is that each level of the protocol stack is wrapping the data that it gets from the higher level with a little bit of extra information that it needs to operate. When the protocol and the packet arrives on the other end, this process is reversed. So to illustrate this, Greg doesn't like to admit this, but he really is fond of my cat, okay? And so let's talk about what might happen. He's gonna uh, download a picture of my cat that she posted on her website. Uh, so here's the picture. Uh, you can see it down here. She's really proud of herself. She got up on this very high piece of furniture. It's pretty impressive watching her do it. I, I get scared every time. So the first thing I'm going to have to do, I mean, this, this picture is too big. You know, uh, Ziz only sends very high resolution photos of herself because she thinks she looks good that way. So this picture is too big to fit into one packet. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to split it up into multiple packets. And so now let's just talk about what happens to one, uh, one packet of information that's uh, contained in this photograph. So. I'm downloading over a web page, and so the protocol that's running at the application level is HTTP. So HTTP is going to put this information into its own packet, and there's, there's room in here for some extra information that HTTP is going to add about you know, which particular request that Greg issued that this particular picture is part of. So now what HTTP does is HTTP hands this packet down to the TCP layer for reliable transport. So TCP has its own packet. You can see that the TCP packet is now a little bit bigger than the HTTP packet. And the reason is TCP needs to add some extra information to the packet. It might have to figure out, you know, put a note where in the image is this particular part of the image go so that when it all, all of these packets arrive at the destination, they can be reassembled into this very exciting picture of my cat. Okay, so I put the HTTP packet in here, and now I have a TCP packet. Now TCP is going to hand this packet down to a lower layer, to the IP layer. And again, the IP packet is a little bit bigger than the TCP packet because the IP packet has some extra information in it. Specifically, IP needs to know where the packet is going. So all of this is going to be transmitted over the internet protocol to Greg's computer. So the IP packet has to make sure that it knows the destination of Greg's computer. And of course, the IP packet is also going to make a note of the source where this packet originated. So the TCP packet goes inside the IP packet. And now this packet is ready for transport. It's got a source and destination. So off it goes along the internet until it reaches uh, Greg's computer. And then what happens is, arrives here, and I reverse this process. So the IP uh, layer gets this packet, and it takes out its own information. It removes the extra information that it added, and it passes this packet up the stack to the TCP layer. TCP takes its extra information. It might fit this packet in with other packets uh, to deliver that, in, that complete photograph. So it takes its extra information, it removes it, and then it passes this packet up to the HTTP layer. And finally, at some point, HTTP is going to receive this particular unit of information and reassemble it into that photo. So this is the idea of encapsulation. Um, it allows protocols to interoperate in this stacked fashion, because as data moves down the protocol stack, each level is allowed to add a little bit of extra information that that particular part of the protocol stack needs to operate. So at the internet layer, for example, the extra information includes the source and the destination of the packet. When the packet is received, those extra bits of information are stripped off. So by the time the, uh, the web browser that Greg is using receives this particular piece of the picture, all of this other information that had been added by the TCP layer and by the HTTP layer is gone and all that's left is this picture of my cat.